Magnavolt. The final word in all those security. No embarrassing alarm noise. No need to trouble the police. And it won't even run down your battery. Magnavolt. Lethal response. It's a free society. Except there ain't nothing free, because there's no guarantees, you know? <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> there's a lot of jungle. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching Numbskull News, and today I'm back with the superhero movie Mega List. We got through the crap, but now we got the mediocre to deal with. Some movies, they're not crap, but they're not good either. That's what makes them mediocre. So what I'm going to do is tell you the good parts about the movies, but then I'm going to tell you why they're actually not good movies. Why they're stuck in this gray area of not being bad but not being good so let's don't waste any more time let's get with it number 70 the wolverine what's good about it how about that opening sequence what was that the bombing of hiroshima or nakasaki i can't remember which town it was and logan throws that uh japanese soldier into a i don't know some kind of pit or whatever the hell a well maybe and then covers him, shields him with his own body as the atomic fire is burning the living hell out of Logan. That was cool. And the Wolverine versus Samurai? That's awesome. Animanium claws versus Samurai swords. That alone keeps it from being a crap movie. However, what keeps it from being a good movie? Logan, no, he, he's like, he's turned into Rogue all of a sudden. He doesn't want to be a mutant anymore. He wants to get rid of his powers. <sighs> I... I I hate that trope, right? I, I, I can't stand it. Now look, it works for Rogue. Why? Because Rogue wants to get laid and no one can touch her. That's a problem. I understand. You don't want to live your whole life as a virgin. But Logan didn't have that problem. It, it killed the movie for me, to tell you the truth. It took me right out of the movie, you know, right up front. And even with, you know, there's some really good stuff in this movie. It was really well made. But I just, I hated that trope being used number 69 robocop the remake the cast is undeniable in this movie you got samuel L. jackson michael keaton gary freaking oldman and they're all really good in this movie really liked it but joel kinnaman kinnaman whatever the hell his name is as robocop doesn't work i, I know i I'm a Peter Weller fan. I, I, I love the classic. I love the original so much. You know, the, the, the music, the, the, <laughs> the characters, the feel of the movie. This thing just doesn't have any of that. It's slicker, but that's part of the problem. The look of RoboCop is too slick. I mean, he's not intimidating at all. What, what, what's more intimidating? A 55 Chevy or a Prius? <laughs> I mean, the Prius, you get better gas mileage. It's it's more uh, technologically savvy. But a 55 Chevy looks like it'll run you the hell down. It looks evil. It looks mean. And Robo, the original RoboCop, he looked mean. He looked Robo. He had, you know, <laughs> he, he did. He just looked intimidating. And he sounded intimidating. This RoboCop, he's just a, a Nerf version of the original. Look, you don't remake classics. Stop. At number 68, the Fantastic Four reboot, a.k.a. Fan 4 Stick. Now, a lot of people say this is just straight crap. It's garbage. Get rid of it. However, I, I, I disagree. There are things to like in this movie. I like the look of the movie. Well, let's start with how Thing looks. Thing looked amazing in Fan 4 Stick. Versus that sponge suit. <laughs> Whatever the hell that was in the original. This movie was darker in tone. They had these guys doing black ops missions on the side. I mean, killing people for the U.S. government. That was, that was kind of cool. And Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom was a sinister, murderous son of a bitch. He was scary, man. I, I was impressed with that. 
However, I wasn't impressed with all the main battles and all this stuff taking place on some weird world. I, I didn't like that. It made the movie feel small. I mean, everything was confined to their little cages, the little science lab area, or that weird freaky world where everyone got their powers. And isn't this supposed to be the first family of Marvel? The Fantastic Four? No one's family. <laughs> There's no adult. They're all like needy teens. And it just doesn't work for the Fantastic Four. Number 67, The Crow, City of Angels. Mm. This could have been really, really good. Now, what was good about the movie is the look. It had a, it had a distinctive look from the original. Unfortunately, that's the only thing that was really distinctive from the original. It, the whole story was supposed to be different, completely different. But here comes fat, rapey Har Harvey Weinstein comes in and, and, and wants to make... He's like, no, 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 no. We, this has to be just like the original. You know, he comes back for revenge, yada, yada, yada. And, and just took anything that could have been special or unique out of City of Angels out of it. At 66, Swamp Thing. Now, what makes it good is this is kind of unique. Swamp Thing becomes part of the swamp. You cut his arm off, he'll grow another one. Photosynthesis. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, the bad guy's a freaking werewolf. That's awesome. I really like it. But what keeps this from being a good movie? Well, it's a B movie. You know, Reservoir Dogs. I mean, Tarantino made that on Peanuts. Peanuts, but made a classic, made a great film. All right, I'm not expecting Swamp Thing to be Reservoir Dogs. What I am expecting is a a better quality movie. They did some cool things with, with, with their creature effects. And that's not what I'm griping about. I'm griping about everything else was just cheaply done. And, and look, the actors were pretty decent in this. You could tell these people were really trying really trying to bring those characters to life and they're pretty good they're pretty effective that's why i don't have this as a crap movie but the making of it the everything else around it could have been better even with even with a small budget i just felt felt like you know in b movies that they, they, they're not worried about that they're just trying to do a little shock a little awe a little death a little this and that and it had that that campy feel to it that could have been taking, taken out and made into a better movie. And it just wasn't. At 65, X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Now, before y'all want to burn this video to the ground, hear me out. All right, I'm not saying this is a good movie. <laughs> I won't, I'm not going there. I'm just saying it's not horrible. It, it's really not. Not for the obvious reasons we're going to get to those, but the good stuff. That opening sequence, you know, you get to see Logan fighting in all these wars. That was really cool because you don't think about how old the dude is. So it really gives you some perspective on who Wolverine is, how long he's been around, how much blood the man's seen. Leave Schreiber as Sabretooth was really good, brought some depth into the character, and I really liked his performance. I liked some of the other characters you get to see, you know, like the Blob and stuff like that. Now we got to get <laughs> to the horrific Deadpool part, you know. I'm with you guys. They totally destroyed Deadpool. This is why it's not a good movie. This is the main, main reason why it's not a good movie. At 64, Kick-Ass 2. Now, I really like the first one. I, I love the villain Red Mist. I think he's hilarious. I like, I like Jim Carrey in this. I thought he was really good. What I didn't like, you know, Nicolas Cage has done his part to destroy comic book movies before, right? However, he made that movie, the first Kick-Ass, Big Daddy. That was great. And of course he's dead, so there's no Big Daddy. And it, it really takes away from the movie. Uh, I love Hit Girl, but in the first one she's a preteen, so that... So it was just kind of shocking to see this little preteen, like 12-year-old girl, just murdering the world. But now she's a teenager, and she she's trying. She's like basically retired, and she's just trying to be a teenage girl. And it doesn't work for me. It's just a bland movie because of it. And everything I loved 
<laughs> about Kick-Ass, I don't get in Kick-Ass 2. At number 63, the much-hated Daredevil. <laughs> I really like Bullseye. I love Bullseye. When he flicks that little peanut and chokes out, <laughs> kills that old lady on the plane because she's being annoying. That was hilarious. And, and I like Michael Clark Duncan a, as Kingpin. You know, no, he's, he's not as good a, as the Netflix Kingpin. But still, he's huge. He's cool. He's got a pimp stick. I like him. And I, I like the little touches they, they put in. You know, how does Daredevil sleep with all these heightened senses? Well, he's in a sleep deprivation or a sensory deprivation tank, right? Filled with water. That was cool. I, I, I was like, wow, that's really imaginative. Unfortunately, Ben Affleck is playing <laughs> Daredevil, and it just... Ben Affleck's a good actor. He really is. He's just not a good superhero. I mean, he's got the chin for it. He's got the looks for it. He's, you know, I don't care if it's Batman, Daredevil. It, no. Just no. And, and by the way, Jennifer Gardner is a horrible Electra. Just no. They missed a mark with that one, too. At 62, Suicide Squad. And you know what? There's a lot of people that are going to think that deserves to be on the crap list, too. I won't argue a whole lot with you, but I'll tell you what I do really like about Suicide Squad. I like Diablo. Diablo's awesome. Why they killed him off, I don't know. <laughs> the dude was freaking amazing. Will Smith was really good. It's the best thing he, he has done in a while to me. I mean, some of his movies have kind of... Uh, but Will Smith is dead shot was great and i can't believe this is the thing i was the most worried about is how are you going to do harley quinn who's going to pull that off well that chick nailed harley quinn that was a great portrayal what keeps this movie from being good is the villains All right i'm scared of a belly dancer and her big ass <laughs> brother and of course the tornado of trash here we go really they should have had the joker as the villain that would have been great if the Joker was the villain of the Suicide Squad and Harley Quinn had to go after the Joker, that would have made for some interesting moments in the movie. You don't get any of it. Or hell, even even the main chick, the, the black lady, she's kind of got some villain in her anyway. She represents the government. That would have been a great villain too. And that woman can act. She can really pull it off. I can't, I can't remember the, her name to save my freaking life. Sorry, I should have researched that, but... That, that's, that's a really good character. And they, so they had so many great choices for more ground level villains. And, and they, they decided to go with the Tornado of Trash. At 61, Judge Dredd. Now, this has been pretty much forgotten by a lot of people, I'm sure. So what's good about the movie, I like the look of it. I like Mega City 1. All right, It looks a little more dystopian than the newer Dredd movie. And plus you get to see out the outside world of Mega City 1. I like that. The surrounding areas where they banish people. I like Max von Sydow. I like him in everything. The dude's, you know, he's a great guy. I love the dude. The voice, the look, love him. But what I don't like is the rest of the cast. <laughs> I don't like the bad guy. Uh, what's his name? Armand Asante. He just, I don't know. I, I didn't, He just overdid it to me. Uh, the little squirrely guy. Ugh. Saturday Night Live guy, I can't remember his name, but they brought him in for the comic relief, and there's nothing comedic about him. And Stallone, I like Stallone, and I think it would have been a much wiser choice if they just did with Dread like he like he's supposed to be, leave the helmet on. I well, we can't see his face. This is Stallone. We got to see his face. No, you don't. Take a risk. Everyone knows the voice. Everyone knows the chin. Everyone knows that Stallone. So it would have been cool just to leave the helmet on. Have him be more stoic like he's supposed to be. But, you know, why, why, why take a chance? We're just making another Stallone flick, right? I mean, that, that's, that's what it comes down to. And that's why it's a mediocre movie. At number 60, The Fantastic Four. Now look, the cast was good. The cast was good. I didn't mind the cast at all. Still don't. If you would have caught me 12, 13 years ago, look, the movie was fun. It's, it's a, it was a fun, enjoyable movie to watch back then. The problem is, it ages like crap. It, <laughs> it didn't age well. Thing looks ridiculous now. Uh, Doctor Doom is not scary, intimidating. 
he he's just there. In 2008, I would have told you, hey, Fantastic Four is a good movie. Now, it's mediocre. It, it just... I have a feeling every every year we get further and further away from the original release date. That movie's going to look worse and it's going to age worse. More and more mold is going to get put on this thing. <laughs> Essentially, it's, it's a movie that's easy to forget. At 59, Mystery Men. At, what was good about it, what I really liked about it, was all these stupid, street-level, wannabe superheroes. You know, the shoveler, the bowler, <laughs> the spleen. I like the group coming together, and basically they're, they're trying out people to see who can be part of the group. I, I liked all that. Unfortunately, the movie, to me, was a little bit too long. It really... It, it started getting stale. Come on, let's get with it, get with it, get with it, and let's you know get this story rolling. So let's don't drag anything out. Like, oh well, maybe we can't be a group. Stop. Just it just needs to move forward quickly with this kind of a movie, and they didn't do it. And like I said, be, because of that, it just got stale real quick. And I was looking at my watch, ready for this thing to be over with already. At fifty eight. This may shock some people. I'm a big Marvel fan, but the MCU makes its first entry and it's in the mediocre list. Iron Man 3. By my estimation, the worst MCU movie. What makes it really good? I love the end fight scene. That is so cool. Watching Tony Stark come in and out of all these different uh, Iron Man suits and the fact that there's all these Iron Man suits flying around and fighting with them. That was cool. Seeing Pepper Potts get into a suit, that was cool. But I felt like I had to fight <laughs> through this movie to get there. There's all this introspection. Oh, Tony Stark's got PTSD. And I understand they're trying to get, they're trying to mine a little deeper with this character. But at some time, I just need the character to be the character. And, and I, I need Iron Man. I need more Iron Man. I didn't get enough Iron Man. And speaking of not getting enough, I didn't get the Mandarin. I'm still pissed about it. I was shown the Mandarin. I thought that's what we were getting. And then I had the rug pulled out from, under, from underneath me. And I got freaking Guy Ritchie with, with, with ex, explosive hands or, or whatever the hell. I, I it, it just felt like a generic bad guy. Instead of getting one of the classic villains. One of the classic Iron Man villains. And that just kind of pissed me off. This is a superhero movie. After all. Give me the Mandarin. At 57 Superman 3. And no it's not a bad movie. Damn it. And I'll tell you why. Because Christopher Reeve makes a great evil Superman. And we got evil Superman. He's ripping over open super tankers. Letting oil sludge fill the oceans. It was cool. All right, he's banging that big boob broad <laughs> up on the rooftop. <laughs> Christopher Reeve knows how to flip the switch and be evil. I like it, right? Let his hair down, get a little dirty. Hell yeah. And I even like the fight scene between Superman and, and the evil supercomputer. <laughs> it, 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 looks, it looks cheesy. And, and to, for, for today's standards, the CGI, the effects were... were we're not there. I still like the fight. I don't care. Shooting the bubble. <laughs> Shooting the bubble thing at Superman. Oh, are you struggling to get out? I don't care. I liked it. I'd have liked it a hell of a lot more if Gene Hackman was in it, but I understand why he wanted to stay away. I, I can understand. And, and bringing in Richard Pryor, you know, to, to kind of shoehorn some comedy in there didn't, it didn't work. It didn't work. And as a matter of fact, it brought the movie down quite a bit. And the use of some generic Lex Luthor, you know, <laughs> brand X Lex Luthor, didn't help matters any. You know, you got a whole comic book world at your disposal. Find another villain. <laughs> you don't have to make some dude up who's kind of like a Lex Luthor light. That was ridiculous. At 56, 2004's The Punisher. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Thomas Jane was really good as the Punisher. I didn't mind him at all. Kevin Nash as the Russian in that fight with the opera music? That was pretty damn funny. I enjoyed the hell out of that. 
you know, we got Harry Heck opened up the guitar playing him this badass song. I'm going to kill you. I, I enjoyed that. We didn't get enough Harry Heck. And speaking of not getting enough, why'd the Punisher's car get destroyed right off the bat? That sucked. He worked hard on that thing. But why is this movie taking place in Miami? That's what that's what killed it for. Sunny Miami is the home of the Punisher. What the hell? No. No, it kind of, it, it killed it. It killed it. If you're not going to give me New York City, at least give me New Jersey. Give me something cold and dark and grimy. <laughs> I know not all of New Jersey is like that. It is the Garden State after all, but the city parts look a little rough. At least give me that. This, just give me some rough urban stuff for, for, for Punisher. It's supposed to be a little dark and a little dank and a little gritty and nasty. And it was just too slick. It was too slick. That's what keeps it from being a good movie. And Travolta didn't help it. Maybe if it, if it was Travolta in New Jersey, it'd be, it would have been better. But it was, it's Miami. And he wasn't some big time crime boss. And they may, try to make him out to be that way, but he's scared of these Colombian guys. I mean... Be the big boss man. Be scary. Be be a guy who's not scared of shit. But, you know, he just, you know, it didn't happen. At 55, Hancock. Oh, this was a near miss. This was going to be a great movie. I love the first half of this movie. You know, you got Will Smith being like this drunk, <laughs> depressed Superman type of guy. I mean, he's hilarious the way he's going around trying to save people and he's destroying crap and everyone's pissed off at him. And the way he saves Jason Bateman, you know, by derailing this train, causing tens of millions of dollars worth of damage when he could have just lifted the car up. <laughs> it was a cool direction they were going with the movie, trying to rehab Hancock's image, right? I thought that was so cool, right? So Hancock goes to prison and there's some cool scenes in there with, with Ogre from... Uh, Revenge of the Nerds, you know, <laughs> I love seeing that guy again. You know, so he was supposed to get a little introspective and he started breaking him down. But what happens when he first gets to prison? These guys step to him like they're going to do something to Hancock, this undestroyable, super-powered individual, and they're going to do something to him. And the most unbelievable thing happens. He, so Hancock shoves one guy's head up another guy's ass, you know, human centipede style, and then the Sanford and Sons music starts up. I mean, you just killed the movie. Thanks. I don't even know who the freaking villain is. I mean, it's so convoluted. It's like they possess these two guys who were robbing a bank earlier in the film or something. Ah, it, it just got dumb as hell. And what was the point of Jason Bateman's wife being another superpowered person and they keep meeting each other and when they do... You know, they have a lot of sex and they lose their powers. Then, then that empowers the these bad forces to come from wherever to take over things. It just got dumb as shit. And I, I, it, it killed the whole movie in the second half. Killed it. At 54, The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, what's really good about this is that chemistry between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. That was really working. Worked in the second one and the first one. What was bad was the casting of those two people i mean it would have been better if those two people did a whole separate different movie some romance some rom-com but they, they're they not teenagers they don't even look remotely like teenagers that's how teenagers on pornhub look it's not, it's not. It, to be fair i like the look of the lizard that was cool dennis leary i liked him as the father he did a great job you know they brought back c thomas howell I mean, I love that whole scene where he's the crane operator and Spider-Man's trying to get to the bad guy and save the girl and save the city and all that. And all, and C. Thomas Howell calls up and he gets all the crane guys to, to set the cranes up so he can swing into action. That was a, like a, a great hell yeah moment, right? But what is Spider-Man swinging to? A, a, a dipshit plot. The lizard's whole thing, his whole plot, right? is to turn everyone in the city into lizards like him. Doesn't that sound like Magneto's plot in the first X-Men movie, turning everybody into mutants? I mean, can we get original here? Just a little? Just a little? At 53, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to be surprised it's this high up, but X-Men Apocalypse. 
they did a great job with a lot of the mutants they brought in. You know, Psylocke. You know, we got to see Death. That was cool. You know, Angel. You know, Sophie Turner as Jean Grey. And the, and the girl that got to play Storm, she was great. We even got a, you know, a little spot for Ali Sheedy. I ain't seen her since Short Circuit. That was great. Do you know what wasn't great? <laughs> and it's in the title, Apocalypse. Oh, really? He's supposed to be this being who, who travels through time trying to bring about the end of everything. But we didn't get that. We got some Egyptian dude who was the first, first mutant. That would have been a cool backstory. That's fine. But isn't he supposed to come from the future, some apocalyptic future to bring about the apocalypse in the present? That would have been cool. All right. But this, this apocalypse, he wasn't scary or intimidating or anything. The, the apocalypse in the X-Men animated series, that dude was freaking cool, right? The voice and the look. He's another guy that brings about another tornado of trash. Thank you. And of course, here we go again with Fox screwing up the Phoenix. I liked the whole scene where she destroys Apocalypse. You know, that was cool. But she's a teenager. She does not have the Phoenix Force yet. Oh, I forgot you're not doing the Phoenix Force, right? No, she's just born as the Phoenix, right? Ugh. And at 52, this is going to piss a lot of people off. And if it really pisses you off that bad, make your own freaking list. Batman Begins. Yes, I'm sorry. It's not a good movie. It's not. It's not bad. There's some things I really like about it. I love Christian Bale as Batman. He is Batman. He's the best Batman. I like him training with the League of Shadows. Personally, I didn't get enough of that. I didn't get enough of Liam Neeson in the, in the League of Shadows. I didn't get, said I got a whole lot of the Scarecrow. The Scarecrow sucks. He completely sucks. Oh, I got some dust. That's good. <laughs> I got some DMT in my hand. It 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 wasn't creative to me. I don't I didn't I didn't like the actor. I don't like the character. I didn't like how they built it up. I just no. I, I like the character of Lucius Fox. Absolutely love Morgan Freeman. He could bring anything to life. The dude's great. But the character is awesome. I, I, it was very creative to give Batman like a Q character, like like they have a James Bond. That was perfect. Michael Caine is Alfred, was genius casting. Loved it, loved it. I got to deal with the Scarecrow. I got to deal with his little plot, right? Which now is going to coincide, because who's backing him up? The League of Shadows is backing him up. Why? I don't know. Personally, I think it missed the mark with what the League of Shadows are and what they do. They see themselves as an honorable society, not the villain. So why are you going to turn everybody into these psychotic maniacs to tear their own city apart when in, in their view, the city's already being torn apart by a bunch of moralist bastards, right? So just destroy the city and, and let it start over or, or whatever. But I don't know. That, that just doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me that that's what would Liam Neeson in that character and that organization would do and sponsor. Since I didn't believe it, it's not a good movie. However, there's too much in it that keeps it from being a crap movie. And I understand, you're like, mediocre, there's no way this is mediocre. Well, if it makes you feel any better, it's got the best spot. It's the best of all the mediocre movies. It almost, I almost put it in the good section. Who knows, maybe a year or two from now, I, I would. But today, no. Thanks for watching this list. I'll be back with some good movies. That's right, real, legit good movies next.